All right, everybody, this is Ross. In uh, today's video, I thought I would give you guys some sort of an update, a little bit of a further explanation into what is kind of growing on in this greenhouse here. Um, in terms of our fig production, we mentioned that our season's sort of starting now, right? In our, our recent video, we talked about turning on the heater, taking the cover off the greenhouse, um, and that there's three different types of figs in here that I am sort of selecting to be grown and getting a head start in this greenhouse. And the one, the first one's the most obvious. This is the late season varieties that uh, usually take a long time to fruit. And if you can um, understand my season here, it's pretty short. It's 180 days of frost-free days. And that's just not enough for some of these varieties. They need some around 210 is probably a good amount of time. Um, also, the earlier I get them, the better the fruit quality is, the more we can avoid the rain, the more heat that there is. Um, so overall, there's a big benefit there. Even if they can, of course, fruit in, my, in the length of my season. But, you know, that's a big one I think a lot of people overlook. The second category is the Bifera varieties. I have a couple of Violette de Bordeaux. There's one right here. Um, there's another one back there that are actually going to be producing quite a few amount of Breva this year for me. In fact, you can kind of count them on these limbs. You can really uh, visibly see them, which is good to, um, good to see, of course, on that particular variety. Um, I'm excited for it. Um, they, of course, should fruit for me uh, before everything else, right? That's sort of the whole ideal and appeal of a Breva. Because uh, they're usually lower quality. Um, in the case of Villette de Bordeaux, they're pretty close to the quality of the main crop, which is really special. Um, but unfortunately, if you don't get them to ripen first, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So I figure every Breba variety, every Bifera variety, if you have San Pedro varieties, I feel like this is a great place for them. Not only that, but they... The Brabus don't really do a whole, all that well here. And normally what happens is we have a very wildly temperature fluctuation in our spring, if that makes any sense. We just have these very wild swings of temperature. And when that occurs, it actually uh, really messes with these figs. Even in the fall, I've noticed it quite a bit. That really starts to crack the fruit, ruin the fruit quality. Maybe you might even see some splitting. Um, but the, the really what happens in the spring here is that a lot of the Brabas actually fall off. And I may have, let's say, 10 Braba at the start of my season. By the time they ripen, I may only have three. So a lot of them end up falling off anyway. And it has a lot to do with our weather here. So if I can get them started in here, which is in an environment that has a more constant temperature, um, they're not going to have any issues with the dropping or at least less issues with the dropping. So that's really important. Also just getting them before everything else, right? I mean, if I can get a main crop fig to ripen, why would I be eating a Brava, right? It doesn't make sense. So <clears throat> the third category in here are the varieties that are very early, exceptionally early. These are the ones that are like, you know, at the very beginning of my season, like Rondé Bordeaux, Floria, Improved Celeste, Hardy Chicago. I mean, there's a lot of them now that we've been, as a fig community, have been discovering are actually quite early and without a head start, let's say they weren't in this greenhouse, they would ripen for me by about August 1st, which is a really good date for anybody. Um, so I, I really respect them for that reason. I value them for that reason. But the coolest part about this is that if I can get those varieties in here, I actually can get them to start ripening by July 1st. And even some of them, we'll put out two sets of main crop, which is really cool. I'll have two different distinct sets where um, you get yourself some main crop and uh, that ripens probably by July 1st. And then sometime in October or even sometime, let's say in August or September, the tree starts to resume growth. Um, actually, usually by sometime in July, because the tree, let's say, you know, it has a whole lot of fruit on it. It doesn't grow. But if the fruit's ripening in July, a lot of that fruit ripens, and then you actually have some energy that's freed up on the tree, and it can resume growth. Once it resumes growth, 
It then puts out another set of main crop, which then ripens for me in usually October, which is not the best quality, but uh, it's pretty decent. I'll take it. So not only am I getting these figs um, super early by July 1st, but I may even get two different sets of main crop. Um, so there's a big bonus for that. And it's such a big bonus to me that I have, if you look at my spreadsheet down in the description of this video, I've shown you guys my keeper list. We've talked about that pretty great length. Um, there's a number, there's a percentage at the top of each uh, keeper. So there's, there's the early varieties, the mid season varieties, the late season varieties, and then the very late varieties like Black Madeira, Del Zermatons, De La Senora, Hivernenka. Um, those, out of all my collection, there's a percentage there. So are the very late varieties, I think out of all the, all the figs I have, only 5% of them should be a very late variety is what I've kind of concluded here. Um, the early varieties, over half of my collection, about 50 to 55% should be early varieties. And it really comes down to using this greenhouse to its full potential. If I can, of course, get them in here and get them to ripen by July 1st, that's insane. A fig ripening in July versus a fig ripening in August is such a huge difference, guys, in quality, um, in flavor, obviously, how that all relates to each other. Um, it's even like that from August to September and September to uh, October. So, you know, obviously it depends on the weather, but it's really all about that sunlight. It's all about the amount of heat that I'm getting at that time. And in July, that's really the, the most that I'm going to get here in this particular climate. Um, you know, as soon as we get to like the end of June, we start losing daylight. Um, you know, we do actually get it quite warm, a bit warmer after June. Um, but uh, for the most part, we still have high heat in July and we have the longest days. So for me, that's really the, the best time to get these fruits. And instead of having everything in here, basically, I mean, the majority of it in here is our late varieties. And I would like to lower that number from, like I said, there only should be 5% of them are going to be very late. And I think it's 15% are just the late varieties. The late varieties here, like I would say, like Col de Don Blanc right here I'm looking at. My Col de Don Blanc, believe it or not, with this greenhouse head start will ripen for me by August 1st, which is insane, which is awesome. Um, but I would consider this a late variety. Um, you know, I could probably get the mid-season varieties in here to ripen by uh, July 15th, and then the early season varieties to ripen by July 1st. So I just don't really see the whole much of a, of a benefit of having too many of these late varieties that require this greenhouse head start. Um, they're sort of just taking up that room, and I'm missing out on a whole crop that could be happening in July. Let's say I have 50 trees in here, 40 of which are late, why not cut that number in half to 20? That way I could have 20 to 25 early varieties in here that are gonna fruit for me at a very early time of the year. I'll get myself fruits in July, the highest quality I can grow, and at a high quantity. And I may even get two crops of them. You know, so I think I'm sort of making my point here. Um, it's just a big realization. I give you guys a glimpse into the, the perspective that I have right now at this point of, um, of me growing figs now for what, like six years or something. Um, so uh, another point I wanna make is that we have an experiment sort of going on in here. Uh, you know, I do wish I had more early varieties in here. I planted a lot of them in the ground. So I'm kind of limited in the numbers exactly, but I have things like Ronde de Bordeaux. I have a Ronde de Bordeaux tree here. It's not very mature. It's, uh, it's quite young, but this is gonna be kind of like my control. Um, this one should fruit for me um, because Azores Dark, I have an Azores Dark tree right here. Azores Dark for years fruited for me in here by July 1st. That's how I kind of come to these numbers, right? I have the experience with it. So if, uh, if Azores Dark's fruiting by July 1st, that's quite early, is it not? Um, that's really insane, but I, I don't really exactly know how early Azores Dark is. I wish I could say for sure. So comparing the two, 
I'd like to be able to compare Ronde Bordeaux, a known very early variety, with something like Azores Dark. You never know. This Ronde Bordeaux may fruit even earlier than uh, July 1st for me. So it's going to be interesting to see how that does compared to also Campanieri we have in here to, uh, to also test the earliness. We have Smith in here. We got a bunch of different things in here, uh, but I wish again, I wish I had more of these early varieties in here to test to compare them. Um, so this is one little experiment. That's not really an official experiment, but it's something, um, you know, more of these earliness tests are also being compared in the ground. I have many Azores darks in the ground. I have many Campanieris in the ground. I have many Ronde Bordeaux in the ground. I have so many of these varieties now just in different locations in different forms, also in pots. And then of course, being them in pots, how are they being woken up? Are they being woken up in the greenhouse? Are they getting woken up a more natural way, like uh, just being put on the patio, um, kind of like coming out of someone's garage? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of experiments going on, and I think that's part of this and why I wanted to get some more of these varieties in here. Um, it's going to dramatically change. I mean, it's funny how this is really quite different than last year and how the amount of these varieties I have now is pretty much cut in half, maybe even more than that, in this greenhouse. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how this changes again from this year to, to next year um, to really change the, um, really the perspective to what it, what it is right now for me to what it should be um, in future years. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally expecting more of these early varieties in here. I'm gonna get rid of probably quite a few of these very late season varieties, unless I'm really, really in love with them, like the Coldenon Blanc as an example, or like Sakura Black or Italian 258. You know, you have to make these, uh, these hard decisions. Um, but in the end, uh, this is gonna be a very productive year, and so is next year. So we'll, uh, we'll see you guys soon. I hope this one made a lot of sense and cleared up some thoughts, uh, gave you guys some good ideas for what you should be doing in your greenhouse if you uh, have one of these sort of similar setups where you guys are at. So check us out on Fig Boss, um, Facebook and Instagram, and also hit that bell button to be notified when we have new videos, all right? Take care. We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.